A group of girls in a remote area of Pakistan have been given a rare treat of learning to ride a bike. Females in the conservative region of Lundi Kotal are usually prevented from doing any type of sport. But professional athlete Samar Khan was able to set up the first cycling camp there. She said her aim was to give girls the chance to experience the joy of this kind of physical activity and also to empower them. There has been some opposition to it and we'll have more on that in a moment. But first, here's what some of the girls felt about cycling for the first time and their situation. I am happy that this event was held, as women in our area are not encouraged to participate in sports, especially cycling. I have learned today that we shouldn't be bothered about what people say, as men and women are equal. I want to get an education, and I also love sports. I want to make my name in sports, but this is an honour problem for men, so they don't allow us to do sports. Because of a lack of education, they marry their daughters when they are only 13 or 14. My friend, who is my age, is getting married this month. And joining me for more on this is DW News reporter Finish Javed, who brought us this story. Finish, welcome. What did the organizers want to achieve with this event? So, Birish, this event was organized in a very remote part of Pakistan that borders Afghanistan. And although these tribal areas have been merged with the neighboring province, they still have very conservative customs and traditions. So, usually women stay at home, and when they leave, um, they're often accompanied by men of their families. Um, we don't see young girls, teenage girls, playing on the streets. They play within the boundaries of their homes. And education and sports opportunities are very limited. So I think the aim of the event was to show to the world that these girls, without breaking their customs, and as we can see, that they're properly covered, without breaking their customs, they can claim public spaces. They can be on the streets and enjoy their time. You, you, you talked about the, describe these areas as the tribal areas. So what particularly stands out about this event being held in these so-called tribal areas? So for some men and some religious leaders, um, this cycling event was an attack on their values. Um, so, for instance, there was a there is an influential uh, Muslim cleric in the region, and after this rally was this event was held, he posted on Facebook and saying that all will be done to prevent this from happening again. He called this an NGO-sponsored event um, that is attacking the tribal values. And not only this, um, a local chapter of. Pakistan's big religious party, they held a rally against this event in the town. And men were holding placards saying that a woman's place is at her home. And that um, a, an attack on tribal values will not be tolerated at any cost. So, and also on social media, there have been comments uh, criticizing the event. So the opposition has been intense. But why are men particularly threatened by this? It's just girls riding a bike, what's so threatening about it? Because it empowers women. They can see that they will have a voice. And I think what happened with this uh, rally, with this event was that now these girls have experienced the freedom. They have, they have experienced controlling the bike, learning to bike, and that changes a lot. Now, you talked about this being a particularly conservative part of, uh, of Pakistan, and you also mentioned that this was a tribal area, but what is it like in the rest of Pakistan? I mean, can a woman cycle freely on the streets and choose when and where she wants to do this? Women's mobility in Pakistan is very restricted. Um, in urban areas, you would see women driving cars, but only those who can afford it, and that's a minority. Most women would use public transport, which in most cases is not women-friendly. There have been some certain government programs where they try to 
train girls to ride motorcycles. Uh, but still, you would rarely see women riding a bike or, or a bicycle. And I will give you my example. Um, I mean, as a child in Pakistan, I used to bike a lot. But when I grew older, I was not allowed to do that. And when I moved to Germany, in Bonn, I would bike from my home to office along the Rhine River. And for me, I understood the value. It was like a privilege that I had. And riding a bike is something that's considered normal in many parts of the world but for me I, I could I every time and I would never get bored mm -hmm. because I knew the value of it and I in loved the freedom that nobody's harassing me looking at me um, and I, I just felt grateful so I'm I, I can feel how, why there was so much of happiness and smiles uh, on these young girls' faces. Um, as you are smiling right yourself right now, I, I have to ask you, was it always like this in Pakistan? Was it always problematic for women and girls to ride on the streets publicly? No, it ha was not always like this. When I was in school, I remember my uh, school principal used to tell us that right. when she was young and she used to go um, to college, she would bike in Lahore. Right. But in my generation, that is almost impossible. Um, so Pakistan was not always like that. Right. Uh, during 80s, there was a military dictator, uh, and he he kind of right. had very strict a uh, vision uh, a for Pakistan. And I think uh, a generational change for the yes. worse. We'll leave it there, Vinish. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you.